Good afternoon. Again, welcome to our class, Community Engagement, Solidarity, and Citizenship. In today's, before we start our session for today, I would like to inform you that I will only entertain some questions and clarifications after my discussions, and I would like to uh, to request that kindly please turn off your camera and your mic during my discussions. And I am again, I am RLJ Banatanto, your instructor in these subjects. And before we start our discussions, let's have first a recap what we discussed last meeting. Okay, class. What we discussed about last meeting. Okay, class. We discussed about the different perspective on community and the dif and the, and the purposes of community actions and the development as a process of social change and community development as a process of of our community actions and today's discussions we will discuss about the universal declarations of the human rights and the universe and the human rights and the grassroots and today we have the specific learning objectives explain the and appreciate the community actions core values and principles and promote awareness of human rights in communities appraise the values of the social equity and the gender equity in the context of participatory development and analyze the strategies of empowerment and advocacy through community actions and develop commitment and convictions to the participatory development for the community will be. And now let's have the universal declarations of the human rights. The human rights are, are universal in nature. They are rest upon the fundamental philosophical claims that exist are not originally identifiable moral order and order whose legitimacy precedes the contingent social and historical historical conditions and applies all the human beings everywhere and all times according to Nicole in 1992 they exist are available and standards of justifications and criticisms whether or not they are recognized or implemented by the legal systems of are officials of the country and the human rights as to identify the basis of determining the shape the content and the scope of the fundamentals in the public norms okay the universal declarations of the human rights are the udhr is an international document that states the basic rights of the fundamental freedoms and to which all human beings are entitled the universal declarations of human rights foundations of acknowledging that the integrity the, the integral Dignity of a person is the foundations of the freedom, justice, and peace. And it pronounces the human rights are the universal, that are the poor, are to be appreciated by all people, black or white, or the tall or the small, and the poor. And the Universal Declaration was adopted in the United Nations General Assembly on December 10, 1948, has 30 articles and it embraces the political rights like the right to life liberties free to speech and privacy as well as economic and the social and the cultural rights like the right to social security health and education and now let's and now we have the summary of the universal declarations of the human rights first we have the article one the article one says that all human beings are born are free to born are free bo are born free and equal in dignity and rights they are endowed with the reasons and, cert and conscience and conduct act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. So, are the Article One says that, and lahat ng tao ay isinilang, isinilang na, na malaya, isinilang na malaya at pantay-pantay sa karang karangalan at mga karapatan, at silay uh, pinagkalooban ng katwiran at budhi na at dapat na mapalagayan sa isa't isa sa diwa at ang um, kapatiran or the organization and the article 2 says that everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedoms to sit forth in these declarations without the distinct of any kind such as race color sex language religion political or the other opinion national or the social origin property birth or the other status Furthermore, no distinctions shall be made on the basis of the political and the juris jurisdictional or the international international status of status 
status of the country or the territory to which a person belongs, whether it be independent, trust, and non-self-governing, or the under any limitations of sovereignty. The Article 2 says that ang bawat tao ay, may karapata, ay karapat dapat sa lahat na karapatan ng kalayaang nakalahad sa pahayag na ito na wala, <coughs> nang walang anumang uri ng <coughs> pagtatangi gaya ng lahi, kulay, kasarian, wika, rehiyon at kurukurong pampolitika o iba pa. Pinagmulang, bansa, o lipunan, ari-arian, uh, kapanganakan at iba pang katayuan. Bukod dito, walang pagtatangi gagawin batay sa katayuang pampolitika, jurisdiksyonal o pandaigdig, pandaigdig na kalayaan ng bansa o teritoryong kinabibiling, kinabibilangan ng, mga, ng isang tao. Maging ito ay naka, nagsasarili, itinitiw, itinitiwala at di, ma, di makapamamahala sa sarili o nasa ilalim ng anumang katakdaan ng soberanya. And now, the Article 3. Article 3 says that everyone has the right to life, liberty, and security of a person. So, the Article 3 says that ang bawat tao ay may karapatan sa buhay, kalayaan, at kapanatagan ng sarili. And the Article 4 says that no one shall be held in slavery or servitude. Slavery and the slaves' trade shall be prohibited in all their norms. The Article 4 says that walang sinumang aalipin at bubus sa busin, bu, bu, bubus sa busin at, ip, at ipinagbabawal ang anumang anyo ng pangaalipin at pangangalakal ng alipin. Ang alipin, rather. Now, when we have the Article 5, the Article 5 says no one shall be subjected to torture or the cruel and inhuman, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. The Article 5 says that Walang sinuman ang mahihirapan o lalap, lalapatan na malupit na at o na di makatao o di makataong di makatao na uh, nakaka di makatao o nakalalait na pakikitungo sa pagpaparusa. And now we have the Article 6. The Article 6 says that Everyone has the right to write to recognitions everywhere as a person as a person before the law. So it says that ang bawat tao ay may karapatang kilalanin sa anmang dako na bilang isang tao o sa harap ng batas. And now we the article 8 uh, says that everyone has the right to an effective remedy by the competent competent rational tribunals the, uh, for acts violating the fundamental rights granted by him and the constitution constitution or by the law so the article 8 says that ang bawat tao ay may karapatan sa mabisang lunas na karapatan ng hukumang pambansa unko tungkol sa mga gawang, gawang lumalabag sa pangunahing mga karapatan na ipinagkakaloob sa kanya ng saligang batas o ng batas and the article 9 says that no one shall be subjected to arbitrary arrest or detention or exile. This article says that walang sinumang tao ang ipailalim sa mga di makaitwirang pagdakip o pagpiri o pagpapatapon. Now we have the article 10. The article 10 says that everyone is entitled to fulfill equality to a fair and public hearing by an independent and impartial, impartial tribunal in the determination, determination of his rights and obligations and of any criminal charges against them. So, it says that ang bawat tao ay may karapatan sa ganap na pag, uh, pagkakapantay-pantay is isang makatarungan at, kayang, at hayag na pagiliti sa isang hukumang malaya at walang kinikilingan sa pagpapasiya kaniyang mga kaniyang mga karapatan at pananagutan uh, panang, panag, pananagutan sa mga, at sa anumang paratang na kriminal laban sa kanya and now let's have the article 11 the article 11 says that everyone charged with a penal offense has the right to be presumed presume innocent until they are proved guilty according to the law in a public trial and which 
he has had all guarantees necessary for his defense. It is said that ang ba, it is said that ang lahat o ang bawat isang tao ay may ana taong pinararatangan ng ng pagkakasalang pinarurusahan ay may karapatang ituring na walang sala hanggang di napapanat uh, napapatunayang nagkasala alin sunod sa batas ng isa sa isang hayag na paglilitis na pa, ipinagkaroon niya ito ang lahat na garantiyang kailangan niyang ng kanyang pagtatanggol no one shall be held guilty or any per or any penal offense of an account of any act or omissions which did not constitute constitute a penal offense under the national or the international law all the time when it was committed nor shall be a heavier penalty be imposed than no than the one that was applicable at the same at the time at the penal offense was committed so it says that walang taong ituturing na nagkasala sa nakasa na sa ma, pagkakasalang pinarurusahan dahil sa anumang gawa o o pagkukulang pagkukulang na hindi isang pagkakasalang pinarurusahan sa ilalim ng batas pambansa o paindaigdigan noong unang panahon ginawa iyon hindi rin ipapataw ang parusang lalong magbibiga mabigat kaysa nararapat sa panahong magawa ang pagkakasalang pagpaparusa. And now let's have Article 12. The Article 12 says that no one shall be subjected to arbitrary inference with his <coughs> excuse me, with his privacy, family, home, or the correspondence nor the attacks upon his, uh, his honor and reputations. Everyone has the right to the protections of the law against such interference or attacks. <coughs> Excuse me. The Article 12 says that walang taong isa sa, isa, isa sa ilalim sa di makatwirang panghihimasok sa kanyang pananahimik, pamilya, tahanan, o pakikipagsulatang ni sa tuligsa sa kanyang karangalan at mabuting pangalan. Ang bawat tao ay may karapatan sa pangangalaga ng batas laban sa gayong mga panghihimasok o tuligsa. And now we have the Article 13. The Article 13 says that everyone has the right of freedom of movement that residents within the borders of each state. So, it says, the Article 13 says that, that ang bawat isang tao ay may karapatan sa kalayaan ng pagkilos at paninirahan sa loob na at mga hanggana ng bawat bansa o estado. And everyone has the right to leave the country including his own and return to his own country. So it says, again, it says that ang bawat isa o tao ay may karapatang umalis sa uh, alimang mga bansa, pati na sa kanyang sarili at bumalik sa kanyang mga bansa. And the Article 14, 14 says that Everyone has the right to seek and to enjoy in their countries asylum from persecution. It says that ang bawat tao ay may karapatan sa isang pagkakamamayan. And now, this right may be not be invoked in the case of persecution generally arising from non-political crimes and <clears throat> or form acts contrary to to the purpose of the and principles of the United Nations. So, it says that walang sinumang aalisan ng aalisan ng kanyang pagkamamayan ng walang katwiran ni pagkakaitan ng karapatang magpalit ng kanyang pagkakamamayan. And now, let's have the Article 15. The Article 15, everyone has the right to a nationality. And No one shall be arbitrarily deprived on his own nationality nor denied to the right to charge his nationality. So it says that ang bawat tao ay may karapatan sa isang pagkakamamayan. And walang sinuman ang aalisan ng kanyang pagkakamamayan na walang katwiran sa at uh, pinagkakaitan ng karapatang magpalit ng kanyang pagkamamayan. And now we have the Article 
Article 16. That rather, the Article 16, 16 says that men and women of full age without any limitations due to race, nationality, or the religion have the right to marry and to found a family. They are entitled to equal rights to marriage during the marriage and its dissolutions. And marriage shall be entered into only with the with the free and the full consent of the mere intending spouses and the family is the natural and the fundamental group unit of the society and it is entitled to the protections by the society or the state so it says that ang mga lalaki ay lalaki at babaeng may sapat na gulang ay may karapatan mag-asawa at magpamilya ng walang anumang pagtatakda dahil sa lahi o bansang kinabibilingan o rehiyon. Nararapat sila na pantay-pantay ang karapatan sa pag-aasawa sa panahong may asawa at pagwawalang bisa nito. At ang pag-aasaway papasukan lamang sa pamamagitan ng malaya at lubos na pagsangayon sa mga nagbabalak na makapang aasawahan. And Ang pamilya ay likas na pangunahi, pangkat na sangay ng lipunan at karapat dapat na pangala sa pangangalaga ng lipunan at estado. Says that ang bawat tao ay may karapatan sa kalayaan ng pag-iisip at budhi at rehiyon kasama ang karapatang ito. At ang kalayaang magpalit ng kanyang rehiyon o paniniwala maging nag isa sa ka o kasama ng iba pang mamamayan upang ipakilala ang kanyang rehiyon o paniniwala sa pagtuturo, pagsasagawa at pagsamba at pagtalima. And we have the Article 19. The Article 19 says that everyone has the right to freedom and opinion and expressions. This right includes that freedom to hold opinions without the interference and to seek, receive the impart informations and ideas through any media and regardless to the frontiers. So it says that ang bawat tao ay may karapatan sa kalayaan sa pagkukuro-kuro at pagpapahayag. Kasama ang karapatan ito sa kalayaan ng kurukuro na nang wala pang hihimasok at huma, humanap na tagapagtanggap at makipag, uh, magbibigay ng impormasyon at, i, at itaspan ang, sa pamamagitan sa alinmang paraan ng pagkakalat ng walang masa, uh, pagsasaalang-alang sa, sa, ng mga hangganan. And the Article 20 says that everyone has the right, the freedom of this peaceful assembly and the association. And no one may be compile, compelled to belong to the uh, to an association. So the Article 20 says that ang bawat tao ay may karapatan sa kalayaan at sa mapayapang pagpupulong sa pagsasamahan. So no one may be compelled belong to the association. Walang sinuman ang pipiliting sumapi sa isang kapisanan o organisasyon. And now we have the Article 21. The Article 21, everyone has the right to take part of the government of his country and directly through the freely chosen representative. Says that ang bawat tao ay may karapatang makilahok sa pamahalaan ng kanyang bansa at sa tuwiran o sa pamamagitan ng mga kat, uh, kinatawang malayang pinipili. And everyone has the right to equal access to the public service in his country. So, it says that ang bawat tao ay may karapatan sa pantay-pantay na pagpapasok ng pangiling, paglilingkod sa pambayan, uh, pambayan at kanyang bansa. And then, the country will be the people shall be the basis of the authority of the government. This will shall be expressed in periodic and genuine elections which shall be shall be by the universal and the equal suffrage and shall be held by secret vote or by the equivalent free voting procedures. So it says that ang kalooban ng bayan ay magiging saligan ng kapangyarihan ng 
pamahalaan. Ang kalooban ito ay ipapahayag tunay na ang mga halalan at, pa, at panapanahon sa pamamagitan ng pangkalahatan at pantay-pantay na paghaalal na idararao sa pamamagitan sa lihim na baluta o katumbas sa pamamaraan ng malayang pagboto. And now we have the Article 22. The Article 22 says that everyone as a number of, member of a society has the right to a social security and it's entitled to realizations. Both the national support effort and the international cooperations and in the accordance within the organizations and resource of each state of the economic, social, cultural rights and is indispensable for his dignity and free development of his personality. So the Article 22 says that ang bawat tao or ang bawat isang tao bilang kasapi ng isang lipunan ay may karapatan sa kapanatagang, kapanatagang panlipunan at nararapat na makibilang sa pamamagitan ng pambansang pagsisikap at pakikipagtulungang pandaigdig sa alinsunod sa pagkakabuo ng mga pagka, uh, pagkukunan ng bawat estado. Sa mga karapatang pangkabuhayan, panlipunan at pangka, pangkalinangan ng lub, uh, lubhang kailangan para sa kanyang karangalan at sa malayang pagkakaunlad ng kanyang pagkatao. <coughs> Excuse me. Now let's proceed to the Article 23. The Article 23 says that everyone has the right to work, to free choice and employment, to just and favorable conditions to work and protections against unemployment. It says that ang bawat tao ay may karapatan sa paggawa ng malayang pagpili ng mapapasukang hanap buhay sa makatarungan at kanais-nais mang kalakayan sa paggawa at sa mga pangangalaga laban sa kalawa sa sa kawalang <coughs> pangkasalakuyang hanap buhay and everyone without any discriminations has a right to equal pay of all work it says that ang bawat tao o ang bawat isa ay may karapatan sa pag, uh, sa kapantay na sa kapantay na bayad ng nang kapantay na gawain walang nang walang anumang pagtatangi and everyone who works has the right to just and favorable uh, remunerations ensuring themselves and his family or an existence worthy in human dignity and supplemented if necessary by other means of social protections so it says that ang bawat isa or bawat isang tao ay may taong gumagawa ay may karapatan ng sa makatarungan at nababatay sa kabayarang tumitiyak sa kaniyang sarili at sa kaniyang pamilya kabuhayan karapat dapat sa uh, karangalan sa isang tao at pupuna at pupunan kung kailangan ng iba pang paraan sa nang pangangalagang panlipunan at everyone has the right to form and join trade unions and protections and his interests. Ang bawat tao or bawat isa sa atin ay may karapatang magtatag o umanib sa mga union na o union o organisasyon ng nagagumagawa para sa kapang uh, pangangalaga ng kanyang mga kapakanan. And the Article 24 says that has everyone has the right to rest and leisure including the reasonable limitations of working hours and the periodic holidays to with pay so we have the article 24 says that ang bawat tao ay may karapatan na sa pamamahagi ng paglilim at paglilibang kasama na ang mga makatwirang pagtatakda ng oras ng pagawa at may sahod sa panahong pista o opisyal Now we have the Article 25. The Article 25 says everyone that has the right to standards of living adequate for the health and well-being himself and one of his family, including food, clothing, housing, and the medical care of necessary social services, and the right to security in the event of employment, sickness, disability, widowhood, old age of the act, or lack of livelihood, and the circumstances beyond his control. 
So, the Article 25 says that ang bawat tao or bawat isa ay may karapatan sa isang pamantayan ng pamumuhay na sapat para sa kalusugan at kailangan ng kanyang sarili at ng kanyang pamilya. Kasama na ang pagkain, pananamit, paninirahan at pagpapagamot sa, ka, sa kinakailangang mga paglilingkod ng panlipunan at ng mga <coughs> karapatan sa kapanatagan na sa panahong walang gawain at pagkakasakit at pagkabalda na pagkabalo o pagkatandaan pagkatanda at pagkatanda at iba pang kakapusan sa ikabubuhay ng uh, sa mga di maiiwasang pangyayari and motherhood and childhood will be entitled to special care or assistance all the children whether born in or out with la or with la shall enjoy the same social protection so it says that ang pagkaina at pagkabata ay nararapat sa tanging kalinga at tulong na at ang lahat ng bata ay maging anak na lihitimo o di lihitimo ay maka, magtatamasa gayon ding pangangalagang panlipunan. <clears throat> And now we have the Article 26. The Article 26 says that everyone has the right to education. Education shall be free at least in the elementary and the fundamental stages. Elementary education shall be A compulsory technical and a professional education shall be made generally available and higher education shall be equally accessible, accessible at to all and on the basis of the merit. And education shall be directed to fulfill the development of the human responsibility and the strengthening of respect of human rights and the fundamental freedoms and shall be promoted understanding tolerance and friendship among the nation of all nations racials and or religious grass groups and shall be further the activities of the united nations for the maintenance of the peace and parents shall have the prior right to choose the kind of education that shall be given to their children so the article 26 said 26 said that abawat tao or abawat isa ay may karapatan sa edukasyon ang edukasyon ay walang bayad. And doon man, lamang sa elementarya at pangunahing antas, ang edukasyon elementarya ay magiging sa pilitan sa edukasyong teknikal at profesional ay gawain maaabot sa lahat ang <clears throat> alawang ma matataas na edukasyon na makipagluloob ng pantay-pantay sa lahat na batay ng pagiging karapat-dapat. And, edukasyon, ang edukasyon ay itutungo sa ganap na pagpapaunlad ng pagkakatao, pagkatao or art sa pagpapalakas, pagpapalakas ng uh, paggalang sa mga karapatan ng tao at mga pangunahing kalayaan. Ta ta at pagtataguyod nito ang pagkakaunawaan, pagpanhali na panrelihiyon at palawakin ang mga gawaing pambansa na nagkakaisa sa ika papanatili ng kapayapaan. And ang mga magulang ay may karapatan sa pangunahing pagpili ng uri ng edukasyon na ipagkakaloob na kanilang mga anak. And we have the Article 27. Okay, the Article 27 says that has the right to freely participate participate in the cultural life of the community and enjoy the arts and to share in scientific advancement and its benefits. So, the Article 27 says that ang bawat tao or bawat isa ay may karapatang makilahok ng malaya sa buhay at pangkalinangan, pangkalinangan ng pamayanan upang tatamasahin ang mga sining at makihati sa mga kaunlaran ng siyensya at sa mga pakinabang dito. 
and everyone has right to the protections of the moral and the material material interests resulting from any scientific literary artistic productions in which um, he is the author and said that ang bawat tao or bawat isa sa atin ay may karapatan mag, uh, sa pangangalaga na, ng mga kapakanang moral at material bunga ng alin mang uh, productions pagkaagham at panitika, pampanitikan o pansining na siya ang may akda. And for the Article 28, everyone is entitled to a social and international in order to which the rights and the freedoms set forth in the declarations can be fully realized. So, the Article 28 says that ang bawat isa sa atin o bawat isang tao ay may karapatan sa kaayusang panlipunan at pandaigdig na ang mga karapatan ay ma at mga kalayaang itinakda sa pahayag na ito ay may ganap na may isa sa katuparan. And now we have the Article 39, 29. Rather. The Article 29 says that everyone has duties to the community in which alone and free and full development of his personality is possible. And the exercise of his rights and freedoms, everyone shall be subject only to such limitations as are determined by law solely for the purpose of securing due recognitions and respect of the rights and freedoms of others and meeting the just requirements of morality, public order, and the general welfare in the democratic society. And these rights and freedoms may in no case and exercise contrary to the purpose of principles of the United Nations. So the Article 29 says that everyone of us or bawat isa sa atin or bawat tao ay may mga tungkulin sa pamayanan sa ikaaari lamang ng malaya at ganap na pagkaunlad ng kanyang pagkatao. Sa at sa pamamagitan ng kanyang mga karapatan at mga kalayaan, ang bawat tao ay masasaklaw lamang sa mga uh, katakdaan gaya ng ipinasya ng batas na tanging layunin lamang ang, na pagtatamo ng kaukulang pagkilala at pagngangalaga. Pangalang sa uh, pagkilala at pangalang sa mga karapatan ng mga kalayaan at iba pang pagtugon sa makatarungang kahilingan ng moralidad, kaayusan, pambayan at pangkalahatang kagalinga, kagalingan sa isang demokratikong lipunan. At ang mga karapatan ay, at kalayaang ito ay hindi mo magagamit sa anumang pangyayari ng nasa salungat sa, layun, sa mga layunin at mga simulain ng mga bansang nakakaisa or sa or ng United Nations. And let's have discuss about the Article 30. The Article 30 says that nothing in these discriminations may be interpreted as simply pa, as implying for any state, group, or persons, or any right to engage in any activity or to perform any act aimed in the destructions of any of the rights or freedoms set forth herein. So the Article 30 says that walang bagay sa pahayag ng ito ang ma ito na mapapaka uh, mapapaka hulugan ang nagbibigay sa alinmang mga estado so pangkat ng uh, pangkat o tao o mga tao na uh, nang mga anumang karapatang gumagawa ng anumang kilusan o kilusan o magsasagawa ng anumang hakbang na naglalayong sirain ang nagkalahad dito and that's for the summary of the human rights, uh, the summary of the 
protections of the human rights. And now, let's proceed to the core values of guiding principles of the community. We have the human rights, social justice, and the empowerment of the advocacy and the participatory of development and the gender, gender equality and equity. So, the human rights. First, the human rights <clears throat> are the moral principles or norms that describe certain standards of a human behavior and core and are regularly protected as annual, uh, natural and legal rights in the municipal, uh, municipal and the international law. And now let's have the social justice. The social justice is a concept of fair and just relations between the individual and the society as measured by the distributions of wealth, opportunities for the person, activity, and the social privilege. And now we have the empowerment and the advocacy. The empowerment of the advocacy as a concept has a deliver as a diverse of connotations and various cultural and the political content. And I have the participatory development, the participatory development, inclusions, and the participations as explained by the World Bank inclusions focuses on the questions about who are included. On the other hand, participation is tactiles, tackles the questions how are included and what the role did they play. And we have the gender equality and equity. The gender, uh, gender equality and equity seeks that equal treatment of men and women. This means equal opportunities in life, eliminations, and discriminations based on gender, equal pay for equal work, and the others. Gender equality and gender, gender equality, equality between men and women does not mean that women and men have become the same but that their rights and responsibilities are the opportunity and opportunities will not be depend whether they are born male and female and that's the end of our discussions for today thank you for listening and for some clarification please call me at 0948847793 for smart and tnt and you can Call me uh, also in 0926-9591-934 for TM and Globe. And if you want to have a review, you can review our discussions at Guide website at https slash double slash www.guidef.com slash e-learning. And have a nice day. And that's all. Thank you.